Well, if I wasn't a lesbian before... Yeah, I'm pregnant and I don't know if the father is Becky or if it's Freen. Haters will say it's scientifically impossible, but Jurassic Park will say life will find a way. Ladies, is it gay to say you miss the taste of another woman's fruit syrup? Asking for a friend. This show is unhinged and I love it. This episode punched me in both my heart and my ovaries. Started from a cheek kiss, and now we're here. The tongue was a paid actor. The amount of tension in that hand touch. I'm not gonna make it. The eye contact. The facial expressions. They are so in love. Their kisses just transcend the mortal realm. That kiss left me gay, it left me lesbian, it left me homosexual, it left me pregnant, it left me immortal. That's just your average vampire to be fair. The minute I saw them both wearing blue, I knew something was about to go down. No pun intended. They were both wearing blue because they're both finally on the same level in a gay way. This show is artistically groundbreaking. We also need to talk about how Anin was explaining to Lady Pin that the lip kiss was an expression of love and then went on to kiss her again and again and again. It's the details like that that make me love this show so much. The candle wax melting at the end? Poetic cinema. I wonder if when they kiss, Creek sensed a disturbance in the force. Like, I wonder if she just kind of felt it. I feel like she would have. The thing is, like, we all know that Freenbeck have god tier kisses. Like, we all know this, and yet, how is it I'm never quite prepared enough? for the tidal wave of gay intensity that washes over me every time they put their lips together. I think that after this episode, we can safely say that acts of service is Lady Pin's love language and Anin's is physical touch. I was scared for Kua this episode. Oh my God. Kua, you in danger, girl. Yes, this episode was pretty much just a montage of Kua being abused, but that's what happens when you encroach on somebody else's territory. What did I say? What did I say? I wasn't joking about how much lesbians absolutely hate men who try to come near their woman. And Nin really said, how can I be as violent towards this man as possible in a way that won't get me arrested? I wonder if the penny finally dropped for him after Lady Pin like declined making him a fruit dessert. Like, I'm wondering if the penny finally dropped. Read the room, bro. Lady Pin's fruit syrup? It's reserved. Nobody knows that I'm wearing a Halloween sweater under this green shirt. I thought green was an appropriate colour given that the theme of this episode was jealousy. Hi guys, welcome to a video and in today's video I'm just going to be giving you my thoughts on episode 4 of The Loyal Pin. Sponsored by my gay notes. CEO of Gay Notes. This video isn't scripted, so please put your seatbelts on and remain calm. So the episode starts with Lady Pin trying to recover from Cheek Kiss Gate. The cliffhanger to episode three, and she's caught the gay. She's feeling it now, Mr. Krabs. So she asks for mangoes so she can carve out some of that gay anxiety into the fruit. Meanwhile, Preek and Anin are debriefing about the Cheek Kiss. I have to say, Preek really reminds reminded me of like a Disney villain sidekick this episode. And Anin kind of reminded me of a Disney villain. She's not doing anything evil, it's just the deviousness. Goodbye Disney princess era, hello Disney villain era. Anyway, Preek is a big fan of lesbian mind games and she suggests that Anin go out of her way to make Lady Pin jealous. Because if she gets jealous, it's a sure sign that she has feelings. So with the whole jealousy thing, on the one hand I was like Anin is already well aware that Lady Pin gets jealous. But on the other hand, I guess it's fair to say that she doesn't know for sure if it's lesbian jealousy or genuine gal pals jealousy. And there's a big difference between the two because only one of these leads to the path of lesbian activity. So Anin really needs to know which it is. The stakes are high. Red wire? Blue wire. So Anin takes Preek's advice and turns the lesbian mind games up to level a thousand, utilising an unsuspecting Lady Ungfa in the process. And she goes for blood. Anin putting that flower in Lady Ungfa's hair was such a low blow. I felt so sorry for Lady Pin, because the whole flower in the hair moment was something special that she shared with Anin. And on top of that, watching another woman feed Bay the food that you've prepared for her, 
Mmm. And Nin is playing with her life. So Lady Pin decides she's had enough of the lesbian mind games and excuses herself. And Nin goes to check in with her. She goes to kind of like test the waters, you know? She tries to get her to admit to her jealousy. But Lady Pin has a tight grip on that gay denial. She is not budging. And then there's another Will they kiss moment? Before they're interrupted by Koi, who informs them that Kua has arrived. And Anin does not like this. In fact, nobody likes this. Especially Preek, who never misses a chance to drag that man. Or any man, actually, and that's why we love her. Anyway, this unwelcome visit of his provokes an intense lesbian rage inside Anin. And since she's in her devious era, she concocts a plan which involves humiliation and legal violence under the guise of a tennis match to let him know his place and hopefully get him to back off from her woman for good. Anin is a little scary. I don't like Kua, but I don't want him to die. But on the plus side, Preet gets a new outfit and it feels like unlocking a new character almost. Tennis Preek, new outfit unlocked. And then it's the tennis match, which is pretty much just a montage of Kua being abused and humiliated. But I have no sympathy for him. Bro refuses to read a room and Anin is defending her territory. She is in the right. The way that I laughed when Kua was like doubled over in pain and he expresses this to Lady Pin. And instead of comforting him, she just nods and walks away. Ice served on ice, baby. That woman does not care if he lives or dies and even still he has the audacity to ask her if she'll make some fruit dessert for him. But she makes it clear that he is not welcome to try her fruit desserts. Her fruit desserts are reserved for a nin. A nin has a VIP pass. Kua is locked out of the venue. I'm hoping that the penny finally dropped for Kua after this tennis match, but I'm not hopeful. Like, go away, bro. Leave lesbians alone. This series has zero time for male love interests, and that's why the lesbians love it. Then a nin and Preek convene for another deep brief and this time they decide to move into phase two of Operation Seduce Lady Pin. They decide what's needed is some Anin and Lady Pin alone time, see a window of opportunity with Princess Patamika going away, and they seize it with both hands. And this is where the line is drawn at Preek being a third wheel in their relationship because she gets sent away. I mean, yes the kiss was like my favourite part of this episode but can we also talk about Preek's acting skills when she pretended to be upset and ran away crying. I did laugh out loud at Preek in this scene. That woman is so, so funny. Nam and Becky are such a great comedic duo. Give Nam an Oscar, that woman has the range. So in Preek's absence, Lady Pin steps in to take care of Anin and she makes her a fruit dessert. It's a sign. This woman expresses herself through fruit. The fruit dessert was practically a proposal. And then it's the thunderstorm scene. I'm not crying, somebody's been chopping onions. This scene punched me in the heart because not only do we see more of Lady Pin's tragic backstory and also see why she's so scared of Thunder and all the kind of negative memories that Thunder brings up for her, but Anin knows this about her and she is so protective and comforting towards her. I think in this scene you kind of really see the strength of their bond and just how kind of deeply they're connected and my heart when a nin says she will never leave her. She knows how alone and scared Lady Pin must have felt. And she's trying to reassure her that she will always be there for her. The eye contact. I could write a dissertation about Freenbeck's eye contact because oh my god. I am a sucker for soft scenes and this episode came through with the soft scenes. They're just so in love and the way that they mirror each other's affections by preparing food for each other oh my god chef's kiss so much is said in this show without words and that's why i love it so much i was enjoying the domestic anil pin visuals i have to say more of this please and then we reach the end of the episode where both anin and lady pin are settled down in blue and i know lady pin had to borrow clothes from anin but i read this color matching 
acting as representative of Pin finally being ready to reciprocate Anin's feelings. Same page style. Anyway, Lady Pin is doing a puzzle, but Anin is more interested in doing Lady Pin than she is in doing the puzzle, which understandable. And here's where it gets real. And by real, I mean lesbian. The tension, I was quaking, I was shaking, I needed an oxygen tank just for that hand touch. This hand touch provokes jealousy flashbacks for Lady Pin, where she recalls Anin holding hands with Pranot. And before things go any further, Lady Pin wants to be sure that she is the only one in Anin's heart. That's the lesbian way. And then the kissing tutorial begins. There is so much I love about this kiss scene. Oh, I could write a 10 page essay about why I love this kiss scene so much. The tension, the tenderness, Lady Pin's facial expressions, the tongue being a paid actor. Freenbeck's kisses, they're god tier. The kissing tutorial, it was a genius move. It was a genius move, I have to hand it to a nin. And it's safe to say her commitment to being a teacher of the lesbian arts paid off. I forgot just how committed Freenbeck are to the authenticity, you know? To conclude, we thank Freenbeck for their lesbian service. I am not gonna survive the rest of this season. Okay guys, thanks for watching. Let me know your favourite part of this episode down in the comments section below. I mean, everybody's just gonna say it's the kiss, but okay. Don't forget to subscribe for instant disappointment, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye!